Hey guys, this is Patrick with fstoppers.com. In today's video, we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna be working in Adobe Premiere to edit a promo video of a good friend of mine, Mr. Joey Wright. Joey is a swimwear photographer down in Miami, Florida, and this is some footage that we shot for an upcoming project. And I thought it would be fun to take some time out to show you some of the techniques that I use to help produce a final polished video. Today's video is sponsored by Artlist and Artgrid. Let's start with Artlist. For years now, Artlist has been creating some of the best high quality music and sound effects for content creators. And unlike other companies that charge fees per song or per project, Artlist offers a subscription model that allows you to use as many songs for as many projects as you need. And best of all, you can still use the songs you've downloaded even after you end your subscription. Recently, Artlist announced their sister company, Artgrid, which aims at offering content creators the same flexibility licensing model, but now with video. With Artgrid, you can get unlimited story-driven stock footage from today's top cinematographers, all for a reasonable monthly subscription. If you simply need HD footage for your YouTube videos, or if you need 8K files in log or raw formats, Artgrid has something for everybody. Unlike other stock websites, Artgrid offers unique cinematographer kits, which bundle a bunch of useful clips from one artist, all shot in a similar style, which really will help you make your projects feel much more cohesive without having to spend a bunch of time looking for that perfect clip. They're all packaged right in one. If you are in need of video or stock footage for your own projects, definitely check out Artlist or Artgrid by clicking the link in the description below. But now, let's get into this project. I'm gonna show you some of the techniques that I've used and some of the ways that I've used Artlist and some of their footage and music to create this final promo. So here we are in Premiere now. I usually edit in Premiere with dual monitors, which makes things a lot easier because I can have this timeline on the right monitor and then I can have all my clips and some of my uh, editing tools on the left. But because I'm in the post-production studio here, I have everything condensed just into one single monitor. Now, there's a few things that I want to accomplish with this promo. One, I think I want to keep this about 60 seconds. I just want it to be a short teaser, and I just want to kind of introduce Joey Wright to you without making some long video. So that being said, I've picked out some of my favorite clips and also some of my favorite sound bites from an interview that I did with Joey. I also wanna introduce the location and have a really exciting intro scene. So I've created this little title screen that just shows Miami. My thought would be, you know, we have the skyline or something in the background. I have this interview section here. My name is Joey Wright and I am a Florida-based swimwear photographer. And I do have a second camera angle. I can turn that on here. So if I need to chop up what Joey says, I can switch between the two camera angles. I definitely recommend anytime that you do an interview, set up two camera angles, it can really save you in editing. Um, I'm also thinking I really don't wanna show Joey too much. I'm probably gonna show him at the very beginning of this video to introduce him and have him actually speak to the camera. But if I can help it, I'd like the rest of the promo to be 95% exciting B-roll so that it's not just somebody talking to the camera. Here we have just a few clips of Joey walking with the model. We have him doing a lens change, him shooting. I have another little interview clip that I think's great. Here's some B-roll from the tutorial we did with Joey on swimwear. He talks about uh, traveling the world and shooting in a bunch of exotic places. And since I only shot him in Miami, the only other B-roll that I have was the footage that we shot in Curacao of Joey shooting a bunch of other models. So I have a lot of that mixed in here as well. And with most of my edits, you can see I've laid out the interview here with some big gaps. And what I typically like to do is have the person I'm interviewing say something interesting and get a point across, but then I like the music to go up and I like it to be really exciting with visuals and then the music will drop down and then I'll have another sound bite with some more visuals and then the music will go up. So what you can see here, I've just basically laid out some footage kind of around that one minute mark, but then I put gaps between the segments and my thought is, in between these little segments, I'm gonna have some really beautiful B-roll. So here is a shot of the model walking. Let me show you this real quick because I've nested this sequence. If I click on this, I can't remember where I found this uh, film burn. I wish I knew the company that I bought this from, but I'm sure you can find these online. Um, if I turn off my layer underneath, you can see this is just a clip of some lens flare if you don't want to buy this kind of footage, you could literally just put a light in your room and take your camera 
and just kind of make your own lens flares. But if I take this clip and I come up here to my effects control and I come down to opacity and I change this to screen, normally it's on normal here, but if I change it on to screen and then turn this bottom layer on, it just allows me to get this nice lens flare over my footage. If I turn this off and show you what the normal footage look like, I have the sun kind of right behind her head. So we could have had some slight lens flare, but by adding lens flare on another layer, I can get that really dramatic look that I think makes this look a lot more polished. So there's a lot of little effects like that throughout the sequence that I've already placed. I'm not gonna go into detail with that, but definitely a cool technique you can do. Make sure you line up the lens flare from the same direction of the sun. You wouldn't want lens flare if the sun is behind the camera flaring into the lens when it doesn't logistically make sense. For this photo lesson, we shot the entire thing in 60 frames per second, and that allows us to slow it down slightly by going to 80%, or to do a full slow-mo by changing it to 40%. So if I come here and click speed duration, you can see I've changed the speed from 100 to 40. And because I've shot in 60 frames per second, I can slow it all the way down to 40%, still have smooth motion, and I can get a clip that looks like this, where you just kind of have that slight reveal past this tree line. There's a lot of shots like this that are on a tripod, and so I wanted to have a little bit of movement, just the slightest bit of movement to make it feel a little bit more dynamic. So you can see up here, I've added keyframes, and I've gone from 105%, which is zoomed in just slightly, and then it pulls out to 100%. So this is one advantage of shooting in 4K, is that you can do these digital zooms without losing a lot of quality. So without that zoom, I think this shot would look a lot less interesting. And then a lot of these shots, I could slow this down too and give that slow motion feel, but I really like to blend slow motion footage with real time footage so that you're constantly going in and out of that stylistic choice. And just being able to essentially... Here's a shot where I changed some of the time remapping. And basically all that is, is instead of making a clip slow motion or normal speed, you can actually make it normal speed and then add slow motion as you get to a certain point or vice versa. You could do slow motion and then ramp it up into normal speed. So if I play this clip, you can see it starts off at normal speed and then at the end, it goes into slow motion for just a second. We have another clip here that's totally slow motion as well. And then here's just some more shots of Joey shooting, another zoom out. And then for these last clips, I've added another light leak. You can see that coming in on the top. And then I added a really dramatic light leak to kind of act as a transition so that when you go from this frame to this frame, you kind of have this nice fade in by using the light leak. And then at the very end, I just kind of fade out into Joey's logo. So pretty simple. So the obvious problem is I don't have any establishing shots of Miami. We didn't bring a drone on the shoot. And because we were shooting at the golden hour with this small little window, we really didn't have time to go around and get the shots that we need. So I'm going to need some establishing shots of Miami. And then of course, the one thing that really makes or breaks a good promo video is going to be exciting music. So. I'm gonna jump over to Artlist and try to find a song that would kind of fit the mood of this. I'm thinking it's kind of sexy, it's Miami, so it could also be upbeat and kind of dance oriented. Uh, maybe some house music, something like that I think would really fit this well. But then I'm also gonna go over to Art Grid and try to find some stock footage that would fit these little gaps that I have so that I can make this thing feel a lot more cohesive. So let's jump over to Maybe let's go to Art Grid first and let's try to find the perfect clips for these holes that I have in my timeline. So here we are in Art Grid's unlimited stock footage website and this would be a good time to mention that if you sign up for Art Grid right now, they have a holiday free pack where you can get a cinematographer's creative pack for free just for signing up. So now might be a good time to do that. You can click the link in the description to get to this point. I am going to just type in, let's type in Miami. And if I hover over each one of these clips, you can see we have a lot of drone footage, which I think could be really cool. We have downtown, we have the beach. This is like a helicopter shot of maybe that South Beach there. I think I'm just gonna start adding a bunch of clips to my cart. So I'm going to hit add to cart here. That's a cool shot. Here's like a mega yacht that kind of represents traveling the world. Let's add that to the cart. What else is in here? 
<laughs> it's kind of a cool shot. It's like a drone shot on the freeway. Maybe I could use this at the very beginning with uh, another aerial shot to kind of represent driving to the beach. So let's add that to the cart. Another thing that I have to pay attention to is the shoot that we did was very clear skies, very bright. So I probably don't want to use shots that are overcast. You can see this is a really cool aerial shot of the city, but it doesn't have any contrast and color because it's an overcast day. So I'm also looking at the type of footage. And that's where those creator packs could really be useful is if there was somebody who made a creator pack just for Miami, maybe it would all be shot in the same time of day and it would make a lot of sense. Like this is an awesome establishing shot. And in fact, a shot like this, actually I could see my uh, Miami text on top of this looking really, really good. So let's add that to my cart. So now that I have, I don't know, five or six shots of Miami, I don't need much. The other thing I wanna look up is beach shots. So maybe I just type in beach. And this is gonna be a little trickier because I don't wanna use a beach that's not Miami. Maybe I should use Miami in there as well. I also don't want everything to be drone shots. I don't want it to just be drone, drone, drone. So if I can find a unique angle, maybe a time lapse or a unique shot that's low by the water that has some movement, maybe also some surfing shots would be good. Let me get rid of Miami and get rid of beach. And let's just type in uh, surf. Here's a cool shot where it's just a drone shot positioned straight down. So it doesn't feel like your typical drone shot with the horizon. That could be cool. Let's add that to the cart. Now for me personally, I don't want to fill this whole timeline up with a bunch of stock footage that I didn't take. I'm just trying to fill in the gaps. And I think for this story, the most powerful images are going to be Joey actually shooting and some of the photo shoots that he's been involved with over his career. So now that I've downloaded all of my clips, I don't know, I probably had like 12 different clips here. Let's head over to art list. So if you've ever used stock websites for music, this looks pretty similar. You can come over here and hit play. And what I love about this website is it shows you the waveform. So if you want to find where the music gets more exciting or maybe dies down, you can just skip ahead. I like to typically find these areas in the middle of songs where there's a big transition from loud to then quiet and then it builds back up. I find that I use those sections of the song more often than the very beginning, but you can do a lot with this. You can download it and have all the stems and everything and chop it up so that you can use it exactly as you need. What I'm gonna do is go over to mood. I told you that I was probably looking for something that could be exciting with house type beats give it a really good beat that you could cut to. Um, maybe also something that's kind of sexy and moody. Um, maybe we could hit sexy here and see what we got. And as I'm going through these songs, you may also want to try to decide if you enjoy having vocals on your song. Sometimes having a singer can kind of pull away from the dialogue, or if you want something that's truly instrumental. I find that the best songs are often usually instrumentals, but then they do have some kind of cool melody line that's actually got singing in it. It just makes it feel a little bit less like stock music. Here's a song that I really like from Sunny Fruit called Neverland. It's very modern and contemporary, but what I love about it is the beginning has this strong beat. Let me pause this. The beginning has this strong beat where it, you can just imagine where the clips would hit. I like to edit to where when a, a beat hits, the clip changes. And it also has, as I play this, it's gonna have um, a little melody that's, I don't know if it's synthetic or it's a singer, but it just gives you know a little bit more of a personal feel without it being too instrumental. I love that sound. Let's download this clip, and the nice thing with this is I just need the one song, unlike the uh, stock footage, I don't need to download 10 or 20 clips. I think this is gonna be the one song that we need. So let me add this to the cart, download that, and let's throw it in our timeline. So I've spent the last, I don't know, 10 or 20 minutes just kind of getting the song where I want it. Let me show you what I've done. I've dragged over this Neverland song, and as you can see here, the song is about two and a half minutes, but my clip at the moment is right at one minute. So 
what I've done here is I've just played the song from the beginning, and then when I found a good place to cut it, which is about 53 seconds, I just follow the song and listen to it, and then when the beat hits, I hit the space bar to stop it right on a beat. I then use my razor blade to cut the song, and if you look on the screen here, this song and this song are the same. If I move this over to the right here, I've basically just used the first minute of the song, and then I've patched in a little bit more of the song just to give me the perfect length. And then at the end of the song, if I hit play, it just has this really nice ending, and I wanted to include that for the outro. So I cut the last little bit of the song on the beat, and then I just dragged it over to line it up. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm making the song the perfect length for this promo. So let me delete this one out so you can kind of see what I've done here. If I just play this back. Again, I haven't placed my B-roll yet. My name is Joey Wright and I am a Florida-based swimwear photographer. So again, we're gonna show a few more B-roll clips and then it's gonna amp up with that little bit of uh, vocal line right when Joey kind of makes an entrance. At least that's what's making sense in my head right now. So a cool part of my and then let me show you here what I did at the end. So I just needed this to be extended just a little Being bit more. See light, read the light, and the natural light. And then you can see where it ramps up there. It's a pretty natural way to end the song. So now that I have a rough outline here, I'm probably gonna have to move a lot of these clips around to get this to fit. What I wanna do now is I'm gonna make a sequence just with all the best B-roll that I downloaded, all the stock footage. I'm gonna start chopping that up and try to place it into this timeline. So let me just show you what I would be looking for for an edit. This clip is, I don't know, a minute long. I don't wanna use this clip where it's just the one kite border. The part that I like the most is where this kite border is in the air and you see both of them going side by side. I just think that's the most dynamic part of the clip. So I'm gonna chop that up and just use that one little tiny clip. This actually could be LA, but I just thought this does look like Florida and it kind of represents a really cool shot driving down the street. So I'll probably use a little bit of that. And then I think this is my favorite shot of all of them. Just a nice, helicopter drone shot of downtown. So if I just drag and drop this here. That looks pretty good. So what I think I'm gonna do is try to cut this so that it ends on the first little bell beat. So right about here, you can visually see it. I am going to just cut the title there and also cut the footage there so that so now I need to find the next clip to put right behind that. The next shot I think should be a leaving the city kind of shot. And I have this perfect clip right here of the cars. So again, just like before, I'm gonna find the perfect, most dynamic part of the shot. And I think it is here with all of these cars passing in front of the lens. Let's drag this into my edit. And again, we're gonna cut right on the beat, something like that. And so that shot represented kind of leaving the city. The next shot that I think I'm gonna use is this shot here, the hotels. So we'll just drag this over to my edit. And you can see how long this clip is. We're gonna just shorten that. My name is Joey Wright. And, and then maybe cut right there. My name is Joey Wright and I am a... I like to do things like that where the footage goes a little bit longer so that you start to hear the person speak before you introduce them. Right, and I am a Florida-based swimwear photographer. And then I'll probably also like to put footage right here before he's done speaking so that you don't notice the cuts. I don't want your mind to think, oh, he stopped speaking and was about to say something else and then the next footage showed up. I want it to be seamless. So the next logical thing would be to put these shots here where you know we're kind of at the beach and then now we're leaving, we're heading to some cool island, we're still in the car. A lot of this is just storytelling, you know? It, it's trying to not put anything out of place. 
And I think the driving element kind of keeps this all together where you're not seeing Joey. And this should be on the beat too here. But it kind of feels like maybe he's actually driving. And then I have one of my clips here, which is them arriving at the beach. So here I'm gonna make the music go down lower. So I'm just going to uh, click a keyframe here. And then right when he starts talking, I'm going to add the second keyframe and let's drop this, I don't know, by like 15, 20 decibels, somewhere around there. So a cool part of my job is that uh, I do get to... So without making this too long, I've gone ahead and I've placed all of my B-roll. I've gotten the song placed perfectly. I've had the transitions go up and down. Let me show you this final edit one last time and show you just a few little things that I've done to this. Here's a simple, you know, dissolve to white that I did so that it just starts off going into white. And then I've had a dissolve here so that my title screen comes in. This is an effect that I'm going to probably do a video on soon. This is a software plugin from Boris FX, and it allows you to do these uh, hyper push and pulls. I'm not going to go into detail on how I did it, but it's a really cool plugin that makes your life a lot easier. And then also using sound effects. Let me solo these so you can hear them. It's just the sound of like, I think it's flames being thrown past a, a microphone and it allows these transitions to kind of have an extra little sound effect on them that really makes it feel like the camera is being pulled into a new, uh, new location. So that's really cool. My name is Joey Wright, and I am a floor-based swimwear photographer. And I did it here, too. I feel like that's just a really nice transition. And what's nice is if I solo the song, you can hear it has some kind of chimes in the music, which builds upon that transition. So I think that is really nice. I'll play it one more time. And then those chimes added with the sound effects that I've added here below also kind of help with it. And then um, Artlist also has sound effects. So if you come over here, they have sound effects as well. So you can go through and find all these swooshes and footsteps and ocean and city and wildlife. I've added a few of those as well to where if I solo these clips here, you'll be able to hear kind of the waves. I've added some traffic. I also added a helicopter sound at the beginning. And I'm just kind of fading those in as I need them. I don't want it to be too heavy. I don't want this to feel like a motion picture and there's just so many sound effects. I don't want them to be too loud, but I just think a little subtle uh, effect in the background kind of pulls all these scenes together. In new environments, in I love those transitions where it just pulls you out and it kind of gives this wobble. Trying to build that on your own would take so much time new environments being able to read light being able to direct your subjects and just being able to essentially take all these things that you have no control over and turn them into a great shot and you'll see a lot of this here's the uh, sunrise or sunset shot and you can see this is going to transition from this sort of sunsetty environment the sun's kind of i think it's right on the horizon and then now we are in total shade with these shots where the sun has already set. So I think it just makes more sense to go from these really bright end of the day shots with a transition. So I think that's really cool. And then at the end here, I just have Joey's logo with a light leak on top just to kind of give it this little sparkly feel at the end. My name is Joey Wright and I am a Florida-based swimwear photographer. So a cool part of my job is that uh, I do get to travel quite a bit. I'm not typically hired to go shoot in the studio. So the places that I'm hired to shoot are usually the places that people go to vacation. Working with people in general is a combination of, of everything you see out there. It's 
working in new environments, being able to read light, being able to direct your subjects, and just being able to essentially take all these things that you have no control over and turn them into a great shot. Being able to see light, read the light, and then make the best decisions based on what you were handed over, that's really the challenge in shooting with natural light. So that's the little promo. I think it turned out really cool. And I love the transitions. I love the B-roll. I feel like it captures where we were without us having time to actually shoot any of this drone footage. If you don't have a drone license, you know, this is a great way to supplement your footage. You know, I think these establishing shots add a lot. I also, just so you can see, I've added a Lumetri color to this footage. If I turn this on and off, I just felt like it was a little too blue and not quite contrasty enough compared to the other footage. I did that here too. If I turn this on and off, I just warmed it up. I'm trying to give a similar look to all the footage. You can see this shot was really cool and blue. I just added a warming filter to it. But I think it's important if you're trying to make a dynamic edit to have hard edits, hard cuts, to also have some of these dynamic uh, transitions, these hyper pulls and hyper pushes. You can also do the fades where it fades in and out from one uh, clip to another. So I just think having a large variety in the way that you edit is going to make it look like a professional editor cut this together as opposed to somebody who's just you know, doing these crazy swipes and some of these page rolls. Like there's some really cheesy effects that I would recommend not using, but you may not also wanna just do the hard cut every single time. So I hope you guys found that interesting. It was something a little different than the photography content that we typically do, but because we're making videos almost every single week, this is kind of what our life looks like, even more so than taking pictures. It's actually cutting up videos in Premiere. So I think this shows just how powerful good transitions are, how powerful it is to have some stock footage to supplement your own footage. Of course, we were lucky to be at the beach with Joey Wright shooting beautiful models, so our footage is pretty good to begin with. But inevitably, we will leave scenes like this and need little pieces of footage to fill in some of the gaps. So if you're a content creator and you make videos yourself, or if you need stock music to help amplify your productions, definitely check out Artlist and Artgrid. You can go to the link in the description below. They also, like I showed, have some specials going on for the holiday seasons where you might be able to get some extra clips if you join right now. If you wanna check out Joey's full tutorial, you can head over to fstoppers.com store and learn from some of the best photographers in the world. We also have an upcoming tutorial that this is part of that I can't talk about yet. So make sure you subscribe to our channel below if you wanna learn about what this project is all about. And if you guys enjoy this kind of content that's more video based, definitely let us know. I'd like to produce more stuff like this. I know a lot of what we do is photography, but we also do a ton of video work. So thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments below and I will see you guys soon.